It's Talk Funny, a podcast by Mark Bailey, and other comics from all over. We came to Japan to get out of detox, and to get back into redox. The Talk Funny podcast from NagoyaRadio.com and Nagoya Comedy. Here's Mark Bailey, with Tim Linane. Hello, this is Tim Linane and Mark Bailey, and this is Talk Funny Podcast. So Tim is a... Former, possibly current, the scriptwriter. You know, I'm 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 a I'm recovering screenwriter. Yeah, and uh, I went to screenplay school, and I, I did too. And I'm sorry about that. Yes, yeah, and, and we, spent a lot of money doing it. We both gave our condolences to each other. Yes, yes. And the only thing I remember from screenplay school is I met these three amazing guys: a Italian guy, uh, a black guy, and a Puerto Rican guy. And I never saw them again. But the first day, we're like, "Yeah, we wrote a screenplay. We were so up on it." And I never saw these guys again. And I never seen our idea in a movie. So none never. of us went anywhere. Yes, exactly. But basically, if you go to screenplay school, they're going to tell you you have this guy, and he's on. I'll do a short version, right? He's, I love you. Talk about, wait, just let me stop you there. Screenplay school. I screenplay. screenplay school because the joke is that it's called film school. Film school. But no, no, screenplay school pretty much sounds. Like, you but have you, it right. You write screenplay, screenplay school. Screenplay school. I'm good with that. Yeah. To become a screenwriter. And you write a movie about a guy who's got everything. Everything. And he's flying. He's at the top of his game. Always well-adjusted. And how long is he at the top of his game, Tim? Uh, maybe 15 minutes. And then what happens? His life is destroyed. And that's called the conflict? Conflict, yes. They take everything away from him. One by one. Yeah, one by one. It's a great job. Loses it. Right. Then he loses his wife. Right. He had a girlfriend on the side, loses her. That's too. That's all set up in the beginning. They're all like, you know, he's got a beautiful wife, yeah. beautiful life, beautiful job. And then... And he's a great singer. Right. But after he loses his job, he can't sing anymore. Yeah. Apparently... What? He, yeah, Who knew that was coming? He drank like the wrong fluid or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And then he was always good at gambling. And after he lost his job, he's not good at gambling. <laughs> he was never an alcoholic. Now he is. Wow, man. Well, he's getting into it. That's for sure. Is he playing with us uh, next month? Maybe. <laughs> Wait, he's an alcoholic? This is screenplay theory. All right, he loses everything one by one. One by one. Right? Yeah. This is, well, is no, not, it's not most of the movie. No, 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 I, I was, I was like, breaking it down to you that you're talking about the Sid Field paradigm, classic one. It's like, by page 15, you've thrown up his big conflict. Right. Um, he's lost everything, and then he must try to figure out how to get it back. And then he meets. And then he meets a, the thing, the, the catalyst that will help him and, change. And, and, as we set off. Off mic, it's usually Morgan Freeman. <laughs> He's either it's, God it's, it's or the Morgan president. Fre- it's Morgan Freeman. Yeah, it's Morgan Freeman. <laughs> or or Sandra Bullock. Yeah. Call back. <laughs> but he meets or a fish that can talk or a mermaid. Yeah, like yeah, in yeah a Tom Hanks movie. Right. Uh, he meets some or an alien. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, you know, hey, look, you know, gravity. Sandra Bullock meets up with the other, you know, the astronauts. Right. You know, and you meet the catalyst. And the catalyst makes you do things that you would never do. Is that right? That's I mean, right. They correct it, me if I'm wrong. You know, you're absolutely you're, right on point there, yes. Because you're on the road to discovery. You're we changing have to this, and becoming better. Because we have to end this movie well, no, the, the in whole 110 is, minutes. And, and the truth is that they, the idea is they put roadblocks in front of the character, literally, in order to make... It's, it's, you've got to torture the character. This is actually from a podcast I watch, uh, Script Notes. Um, and Craig Mazin, who actually wrote Chernobyl, by the way... Mm. Um, he literally says, just torture a character. Torture him. Yeah. From from page 15 until the ending. But you put a bunch of roadblocks starting literally from the 15 minutes in. And then you got to make him jump through hoops. And the catalyst is in there going, you got to become, you got to change. And I have to mention it. Tim was a Hollywood. I, I'm just guessing. But Tim was a Hollywood insider. He was a writer. He, not a, He was a, yeah. what were you? Uh, I was a sales agent. But you were in the machine. Yes, I was. So he knows the form. There is a formula. I'm sorry to spoil that. No, oh my There's God. A formula, formula to Hollywood? I don't believe what? it. What? Actually, actually, don't believe it because you're not here. We say this. Oh, uh, you know, I'm all for the Save the Cat and Sid Field Paradigm and all that kind of stuff. That's really great stuff. However, if it's a good story, it's a good story. That's that. And, and what I remember, so you got the catalyst and he makes you do things. He makes the protagonist do things he would never do. Like he would never eat salad. He was never a vegan. But his girlfriend, who he doesn't even know is going to be his love interest, is vegan. Yes. So he becomes a vegan. And then he was always mean to dogs. And now he's nice to dogs. And then suddenly things turn around because the universe and karma gives him back what he was always looking for that he never knew. He always thought he wanted to be the program director at a radio station. <laughs> what he really wanted was true love and to be nice to animals. And then the movie ends. <laughs> but then, if you want a sequel, at the end of the movie, you have to have like this Another alien, cliffhanger. You have another cliffhanger. Yeah, the alien comes in. Yeah. Alien bird comes in and eats all the dogs. Dun, dun, dun. No, no, don't forget, don't forget. From Steve, my, my writing partner, I'm Steve uh, Howard, who's a fantastic writer, a much better writer than me. Class things, you got to bring in Satan on page 78. 
Satan shows up. <laughs> Satan shows up. You know, you got the catalyst and all that kind of stuff. But Satan shows up, and then you know, you got that's that's pretty much everything going sideways. Also, there. after being forced to watch every romantic comedy ever made by every woman I ever dated, <laughs> here's the formula. I could do this in two minutes. You don't need to watch for it. Waste ninety minutes. Okay. <laughs> Julie Roberts at the beginning, she has glasses and, yeah. and short hair, uh-huh. and she doesn't bathe and she doesn't dye her hair mm. and she doesn't use makeup. Uh, at the end, she gets a guy because she uses makeup and has longer hair, and and she doesn't wear glasses anymore. She has contacts. Did you even know that? Con- what a twist! What a spoiler! Oh. Your contacts and hair dye, and now she gets a guy because she's the same girl that she always was, but now she looks better, and so now he likes her. That's not shallow Hollywood. That's not predictable at all. It is totally. It's totally the character change. It's amazing, isn't it? They go from being the ugly duckling. Who's the genius in this movie? Watch the guy or the girl with the glasses and the bad hair. At the end, <laughs> there's Steve Jobs. Don't, don't, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Every guy in, every guy in a romantic comedy is a prop. Right. It's the women. No, it's, it's true. It's, it's for a woman. The romantic comedies are for women, and the women go through the change and really. They, he accepts me for who I am, but she grew somehow. So there you go. Who's the guy from the famous actor from Twenty Four? Uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer Sutherland was in a movie before he was famous in Twenty Four. He was in a movie about air traffic controllers. Lost Boys. No. Okay, keep no. Going. Air traffic controllers. Yes. And at the beginning, you see this. His superior is like chewing gum. And making snarky comments. Yeah. I can guess who the villain is. Yeah. The guy who chews gum. Or the, the guy with the East Coast accent. accent. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't think, I don't think you got that right, Harrison. I think you're wrong. What, you I think, think you're wrong. You think I'm funny? I think you're, you're funny, funny how. Funny how. But he's chewing gum. <laughs> he's like, nice try. You almost killed 230 souls. Oh, yeah. You know? And he's chewing gum. I'm like, but that's, that's visual. the villain. It's visual, and you hear this annoying sound. So in film terms, when you're actually talking screenplay writing, it's like he wasn't thinking evil thoughts. He was doing them. Yeah, but he's the only guy chewing gum because it makes you think that guys who chew gum, only a-holes chew gum. Well, mostly, most whores in movies also chew gum. What are you, you talking about? I'm doing this. Because you know? it, it telegraphs flippancy, right? And also <laughs> and also, <laughs> also, oral kind of thing. Yeah? It's like, yeah, you're not supposed to chew gum in school, right? Where, where are we going with this? All right, I had a quick story. <laughs> I told the story before about my Studebaker friend. I called the Studebaker. She's she's uh, useful and fun and fun to hang around. And she couldn't tell a story. And I can't remember the first story that I said that she told because she can't tell a story, and I don't remember it. But she had a second one, and this was about her friend who was born and who was raised in Indonesia. And in Indonesia, which is a uh, Mormon country, <laughs> Indonesia, Mormon. Yeah, we're, we're only talking Mor- about Mormons. Mormon. We're not talking about any other Indonesia. religion here. Not, not Catholic. Indonesia, no, okay, Mormon. Mormon. Got it. <laughs> Starts with an M. <laughs> um, kind of like a kind of wax, muslin wax. But you know, where? Not, not got it, close. Nick. Got it. I think yeah. I'm tracking here. And so she no was death raised. threats, please. So until the age of twelve, she went to school, and after that, they can't. The girls don't go to school. Wow, Mormons do that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The Mor- Mormon Muslims. I did not know that happened in Utah. <laughs> you know the Mormons. By the way, Boko Haram in Africa yeah. means no education for girls. So that's what it means. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm so, familiar with this, yes. So she was 12, and then she got no more education. And she's now 30, and she still acts like a 12-year-old girl. Okay. Because And she drops food on the floor. She, at my friend's apartment, she eats food and drops it on the floor. She doesn't clean. They, she was never taught to do that. Anyway, so I asked my, <laughs> my friend, who can't tell a story because she's a woman, and she said... <laughs> Tim no LeMage at Yahoo.com. <laughs> uh, misogyny <laughs> at com. Yahoo.com. Yes. Misogyny time. She goes, I feel like I'm her mom. And she said, the guy was trying to pick her up at a bar, and I was trying to defend her. And she was too naive to realize that she was being picked up because she's got the mind of a 12-year-old girl. Mm-hmm. Yes. But she's got the breasts of a 30-year-old. I th- Ba-boom, I woman. think the, guy, the guy's pretty happy that the woman's got yeah. a mind of a 12-year-old. I said, what's her number? I, that's what I've been looking for. <laughs> a, a woman with the breasts of a 30-year-old and a and mind, mind of a 12-year-old? 12-year-old? That's great. I, can, me, man. I have a lot of friends for her lined yeah. up. She was telling me the story. And the point of it was that she didn't get educated after age 12. I learned that after 25 minutes of the story. So why is she like this? Like, is she retarded? Like, is she on drugs? Or is she actually, she's high? And then she talked to this other guy, and then he was from Denmark. And then she said no, and then he left, and he said bye. And then there was a guy from Switzerland. I don't need to hear every guy. So how many guys were there? She's like, there's like 48 guys in one night. Okay, I don't need to know their names or where they were from or what they said. I don't care. In your story, because I got to pee. This has been 28 minutes now, you know? And she goes, so it's because... She didn't graduate, and she only went to school until age 12. All right, so you could have said that at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. They could have been, 
You know, she only went to school to age 12, so she's naive. All right, let's go get a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the pizza could have been here by now. She couldn't tell a story. Can All we, right. Can we, can we get there? Can we get there? Yeah. You can't identify. I mean, the funny thing is that they can't tell you a story, but then when you're having sex with them, like, are you there yet? Are you? I was there. You know, come on, man. Yeah. Now you want to tell me a story. Listen, when I tell a story, my stories, as you've seen, they're about eight minutes. You got about eight, eight. minutes, five minutes. Yeah. And then I'm out. Yeah, no, but these eight hookers. Yeah, but uh, so far it's five minutes in and nobody's having any sex. I'm yeah. losing interest here with the hooker story. There I was, you know, on my paraglider, 3,000 feet above the uh, desert, you know, and I'm flying around. Yeah. And then I'm flying around. Yeah. And then flying around. Yeah, okay, I've lost interest. You're a woman, okay. yeah. So I'm flying around. And it's beautiful. And I fly around some more. Yeah. And then some more. And that's great. And then? And then? And then I fly around some more. And then I thought I, it's getting dark. So this was an eight-hour event, right? Could yeah. You, could you? Does this story have to be eight hours? You know, so as we were talking off mic, we had to say, when you tell a story, do it chronologically because it helps you to get to the points. What, what, what are you talking about again? As, as Steve Martin said <laughs> to John Candy and Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. I know this one. Love this movie. Go ahead. Have a point. It makes it so much more interesting for the listener. This is after like three hours of John Candy going, then I talked to Aunt Ruth, <laughs> not not the one that lives in Ohio, the one that lives, remember I told you she lives in Ohio, yes. but then she moved to New Jersey. And if you watch Steve Martin's face, it just gets oh, man, that was so more funny. and more depressed. Just you just guys don't even know that movie, but that's the truth. Mark Bailey and Tim Lanane on uh, Talk Funny. See you next time.